Hey everyone, Handry and Crazy Handry coming at you once again, this time for an unboxing of the Nintendo 64 Nintendo Switch Online Controller. It's here, we have it, and God knows we need it because I really don't like how the standard controls feel uh, with a typical Switch controller, uh, making this pretty much a near necessity, or at least hopefully. So we're going go, to go, go ahead and open up the box, test out the controller, see how it compares to the classic controllers, as you can see here, from the original Nintendo 64 hardware. These are the original 25-year-old controllers now at this point, and uh, yeah, it should be a lot fun as you see exactly what's going on with this controller and see how it all works. So um, let's take a look at the box itself. It's pretty much just a flat red box, not a whole lot going on minus the Nintendo logo um, on the top. There we go, flipped up on the right side now, and again nothing on the bottom. So we'll check out the back if you want to read those directions in case you're one of those people. There you go. Pretty basic stuff. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, start opening this up so we can take a close-up look, uh, get a hands-on feel of this thing, which I am excited for. Even though I wish they had the uh, all the colors, as you can see some of them here. I've got more too. Um, I had uh, got most of the most of the um, uh, colors back in the day. I think I still do actually. And there we go. There is uh, the outer box gone. <laughs> Can I just pull this out? There we go. Okay, I can just pull that out. So, um, and that... Oh, there is... Actually, there is something else in here. Being a sinking cord. Sinking and charging cable, which will be useful. And that's it. Nothing else in the box, in case you were curious. So, uh, that's one mystery solved. Not really much of a mystery. Um, we'll get the cable out of here for now. Uh, let's go ahead and get this plastic, uh, prison out of... Uh, let's break it out of the plastic prison. And, wow, I can already tell you, it feels different, actually. Wow, this feels substantially. I'm um, once you once you go hands on with it, it feels uh, more normal. Let me go ahead and turn this around. Um, okay, this is gonna be a little hard to compare, but yeah, I'll go. I'll do more hands on impressions in a moment. But it looks it looks good. Definitely feels a little different. It feels heavier. I think that might be the main thing. It definitely feels heavier. Probably partially because um, they there is you know a some a dummy pack in here basically you can't use the expansion slot it seems um, and by seems I mean most definitely that's where the SSC information is you can't pull this out even the trigger or the uh, little latch is gone so um, what you can see there so this is where you plugged in uh, memory packs and 64 or I'm sorry memory packs and uh, rumble packs and other accessories into the 64 controller um, and that is again fully blocked on here if we take a look at the top of the controller we can see a variety of new buttons here at least new for the 64 uh, being, of course, the home button right there, snapshot button on this side, uh, we had a sync button right there, along with the four lights indicating which controller port you are. Of course, the, most games or a lot of games support the four controllers, so that is useful information. And uh, we also have a ZR button, which is pretty cool. Um, I didn't expect them to add this, but there we go. So this should be able to work with a variety of uh, Switch games, even beyond 64. And we'll test out to make sure that actually works. Um, and then, of course, we have the charging slot and then the... Uh, the char yeah, sorry, the USB charging slot and then the charging light right there to indicate that it's, you know, charging or is fully done. And that, as far as I can tell, is all the major new features. Um, everything else seems to be uh, pretty much identical to the original system, again, aside from the block port, but we have the C buttons, which are amazing and a necessity, A and B, the control stick, start, L and R, the D-pad, and, of course, the Z button as well. Um, did I mention L and R? I think I did. Um, so yeah, everything else seems to be very similar, and it, 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 overall it does feel, I mean, the actual shape of it is identical as far as I can tell, like, they nailed that. Um, but the weight is what really trips me up here. It actually kind of feels like, um, it almost feels like it does when you have it in a, when you have a rumble pack built in, like, there's, it's more weighted toward the back. And that might be because there actually is rumble built into this thing. This does have rumble, I don't know if it's right there, uh, but yeah, um, that might explain, uh, a bit more of the heft. Uh, so comparing it to, let me bring in the original 64 one here. Um, the feel is a little different. Now again, my controllers are 25 years worn, so that might account for some of the difference. Um, again, NSO's on the right, the Corda one is the original N64 on the left. Um, I might have to flip this video when we're, <laughs> when I'm done recording it. It might, it might be re flipped already. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Um, but yeah, it overall feels similar. Again, more weighty. The plastic feels... Just a little different, but I mean that was already the case in 64. Depending on which model you had, like this transplant, this transparent or translucent one feels different as well. So not a big deal. On um, the control stick, so it, if you look at the internal mechanics, it looks to be the same. But I'm sure if you break it down, as some people may already have, I'm I wouldn't be surprised if that's entirely different. And it does feel a little different. It does feel, for one, completely smooth. Which, uh, granted, these probably did 25 years ago. Uh, they do, they no longer do. Uh, you can see there's some like white uh, residual or like residue inside there. 
um, from just from being worn over the years, and hopefully that won't be a factor on this. I'm assuming that's something they may have addressed, but you know, we'll see. Time will tell. Um, otherwise, yeah, the control stick feels really good. Like that feels uh, stiff, like it's springy. That is exactly what I want. Like compared, yeah, that feels like it really. I think it does feel like these might have when when they were new. Actually, the green one is in best shape, and that's pretty. That's pretty right. That's pretty dead right on. It, it does feel like you can feel like the internal mechanics, like the springs, this a little bit more, whereas this feels smoother, and that's a better thing. The 64 control stick, I should make clear, wasn't very good, despite it being a pioneer back in the day. Uh, it also kind of showed it being, you know, the first one. Um, Nintendo's technology definitely improved over the years, and uh, that was de no, and that's undoubtedly the case. Hopefully here too. This does this definitely feels smoother. Um, it feels like it may have less of the longevity issues that the other that the other controllers did. I should mention too, real quick, all the buttons feel perfect. Like again, there's no wear, there's no stickiness on them. Uh, these feel really satisfying to the touch. D-pad feels great. Uh, the Z button also has a just a satisfying click to it. Um, yeah, this is this is a pristine, <laughs> perfect condition N64 controller that, by and large, is very close to my memory. I think more so than my initial impressions gave it, uh, you know, gave it credit for. This really does feel like a new controller, minus some maybe minor differences, with the most being a better control stick, which, hey, is a great thing. So that is pretty much the Nintendo 64 Nintendo Switch Online controller in a nutshell. Um, so what do you say we go ahead and connect this to my Nintendo Switch and we try it out in Nintendo 64 games and maybe others and see how exactly it works. All right, here we are on the Switch controller screen. So let's go ahead and hit that sync button right on top, which is thankfully much easier to hit than the standard sync button. And let's see if it can, hey, there we go. And bam, it's connected. And it made a nice satisfying rumble too when that happened. And it felt like a classic N64 rumble rather than how the Pro Controller or Joy-Cons feel in Switch Online, uh, which didn't feel quite right to me. So this this is already boding well. Also, I love the, the actual colors of the buttons show up on the screen. Good stuff so far. So let's go ahead and uh, hop into the app and see how this bad boy works. I'm already loving how this feels, by the way. This feels so good. All right, come on. Prepare that software. Let's, let's get us in there. All right, here we are. It's got the click controller on the screen. Oh, it made up. A, it made a power up noise. That doesn't happen normally. Oh, and those <laughs> the sound effects are entirely different. So this is a sound from I think is that from? Are these from Mario sixty four? That definitely is. That's a babom sound from Mario sixty four uh, when you talk to babom. So and that's a camera sound effects. Oh, I love this. Oh, that, and I think that's a coin, or that's the uh, health refilling noise, or maybe a coin noise. That, I think, is a cannon. Wow, so that's cool. And, of course, the uh, sidebar also turned gray as well to represent the gray controller. Well, we got to test on Mario 64, the game that made the control stick work. Uh, it worked, you know, in one of the initial launch games, of course. Oh, <laughs> I love that selection noise, too. It's me, Mario. So great. All right, I'm so excited. Hello. All right, we'll start by one star file. Oh yeah, baby. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, this feel. Oh, this is perfect. It feels so good. Let's do a long jump. Yeah. Let's get another triple jump in there. All right, we have full camera control thanks to the C buttons, which of course uh, you don't have on the um on the Pro Controllers or Joy-Cons, you have to use either the right stick or hold ZR to turn the face buttons into seat buttons, which is not ideal. This is so much better. You have six face buttons right here, which you need, honestly. Oh my god, I love this. This is amazing. Right, unfortunately, the downside though is Mario 64 uh, does not have Rumble, of course, because that was a Japan exclusive uh, ver uh, uh, release when they came out later, or when they re released it. Okay, now if we want to swap games, this is actually where ZR comes into play. This is this might be the main reason why they added ZR, but that brings up the menu, and now we can go to the game selection screen and start up something else. So let's do something with Rumble. Well, let's do Star Fox 64, because of course that's the game that came with the Rumble pack, as you saw in the box right there. And I'm really curious to see if this holds up to my memory of how Rumble worked on the original 64 with the Rumble pack. And I found Star Fox 64 to be very annoying to play on a standard Pro, Pro Controller or a Joy-Con setup, so this is going to feel uh, very... Uh, very much it, to my memory, with the C buttons providing access to your speed boosts and it's slowdown or break, I should say. Shut up. <laughs> I just want to feel the rumble. Here we go. 
Oh my god, this this feels so good having being able to like you know lean or tilt with the uh, Z and the R buttons. This is right. I'm feeling some slide rumbles already. Every time I launch a charge shot, this already feels feels like how it should feel. Unlike the uh, unlike how the rumble has been incorporated again with the other controllers. All right. Oh yeah, hitting. Oh my god, this is 64 rumble, everyone. Oh, this is brilliant. Let's speed up. Change camera angles. We're entering Corneria right, let's, City let's start now. running to the ground. Oh yeah. That is how Rumble should feel like on 64. Man, I forgot how satisfying it was on on the 64. Man, this might have <laughs> this might have my favorite rumbles Everybody yet still. Oh yeah, baby. Speed up, get to that satisfying rumble. Oh man. This is too good, everyone. If you don't have a 64 controller and you have Switch Online expansion pack, you kinda need this, honestly. Even though it's as much as the expansion pack is by itself. So worth it though. Alright, I'll... Is that... There we go, that's Brink, yep. Alright, anyways, that's enough Star Fox. I'm having way too much fun here. Um, let's go ahead and try a... Uh, let's try a another game. Like, let's try not a... Uh, let's try not a 64 game. <laughs> I love these sounds, can't get over that. Let's see, are there any others? Oh yeah, the info box sound. Oh, that's that's just a neat little detail. All right, how do I can I, how do I get can I actually quit the app this way? Oh, I guess I can't. Oh no, I, of course I can. There's a home button. I of course I forgot the home button myself. It's like a snapshot. There we go. All right, how can I forget about the home button? So there we go. So this oh. This should work amazingly well with Genesis games because you have six buttons as well, uh, whereas the Genesis controller only has three, and some buttons do, uh, some, some of the games I believe do support a six button controller. So, uh, but let's go ahead and go with, um, let's see, uh, uh, what games do I have on here actually? Do I have Mario Odyssey? Oh, we have 3D All-Stars. So we can try, uh, we can see, hey, let's see what Mario 64 does in 3D All-Stars. The better version of Mario 64, of course, with upgraded textures uh, and rumble. So we can see if that works. <laughs> Okay, so far, so good. Okay, B, okay, yeah, B is acting as jump, so that is definitely a problem. C buttons are right. So what is going on? Crouch? Everything is right, except for... Except for B. That's so weird, why? Yeah, so I guess it, it probably just treats the C buttons as a right, as a right stick, I'm guessing, and then the, this game is reading that as a C buttons. So everything is mapping correctly, except for, uh, I mean, that L wasn't used originally, except for B. So that's the only downside. Otherwise, it's perfect. Of course, that's a pretty major thing. See, that's something you'd have to fix, I think, in the, uh, in the, um, uh, you know, the system settings by changing your controls here. Oh, I do have Mario Odyssey here. Perfect. All right, we're just gonna try all the Mario games, apparently. No, we're not. We're not gonna try all the Mario games. We'll be here forever. But yeah, it's awesome to see that this will work theoretically with any game. Now, whether it works well or not, without mapping them yourself... Okay, same problem here, of course, is I can't throw Cappy. Uh, C buttons are, in fact, acting as a camera, so that confirms it acts as a right stick. Uh, which is kind of genius, actually. Um, I mean, <laughs> maybe not genius, but it's smart. Uh, let's see. R, okay, R does camera control. Alright, I can crouch a Z. Um, what do these do? Oh, whoa, okay, I actually activate camera mode, which just like you did, yeah, because it acts as a D-pad, just like in the actual game. So yeah, B is the only problem, and that is kind of a big problem. Oh, it's so close to being mapped perfectly, though. Of course, you also lose X and Y, which um, hasn't been a problem in the Mario games, but that will be in others, I imagine. You know, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild used every button, so pretty much. Oh, yeah, see, I, have no, I can't skip, I have no X button. I can map it to L or something, or maybe ZR? But, but what does ZR do in this game? Oh, that brings out the bow, yeah. Okay, yeah, so the, yeah, game, more complicated games are definitely gonna be an issue. Um, and would require some weird, like, remapping to the L or, or D-pad if you can. Um, but yeah, like, I can't even, and he says A and B are reading as the same, I can't even use... Well, are these both? Oh, they're, no, they're not, sorry, they're not reading as the same, they were in Mario. Uh, but I can't actually, I don't have the sword button <laughs> right now, so that is an issue. <laughs> Okay, so I just discovered something interesting. Disregard everything I said about bu about button remapping for this, because, check this out, you can't! You can't remap the buttons on the 64 controller! Why? 
That's so lame. So unfortunately, some games are just gonna be impossible if you wanna play you know, outside the 64 app. I don't know why they wouldn't let you remap these, but uh, there you go. You can't remap the 64 controller. So uh, yeah, some games are basically gonna be impossible, which I mean, is fine, I guess, in the sense that we didn't expect this to you know, be able to work outside the 64 app, but it's disappointing all the same. Why not let us remap it and make it work better with other games? So there you go. So it may work with some games like Mario to some degree, but you might lose some functions and you can't remap it to gate it back. To, uh, to, gain those to gain those functions back, unless there's an in-game option, which may do the trick. But yeah, there you go, everyone. That is the 64 controller. Overall, I'm extremely happy with it. It feels great overall, or on the whole. Um, it really satisfying. It makes 64 games infinitely more playable. The rumble feels fantastic. I love everything about this. Highly recommended. Um, I hope they patch in the ability to to uh, change the button mapping, but otherwise this is a stellar, stellar controller, um, assuming you have games you want to play with it. If you don't, it's a complete waste of money, but if you do, <laughs> I highly recommend it. So there you go, that's a look at the 64 controller and it and how it works with different games on the Switch, including the Nintendo Switch Online 64 app. Thank you so much for watching, of course stay tuned to Game is Playing for tons more on uh, the Switch, Switch app over the coming days and everything else Nintendo as well. We'll catch you later, bye everyone!